Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I want to use this video to have a look at the horizontal coordinate system in astronomy. Now there are a few different coordinate systems and it will kind of relate to maybe what sort of mount that you have on your telescope. So if you've got your own telescope it might be one of a few different sorts of mounts and you can have an altitude azimuth one, you can have an equatorial style mount. I'm going to do a separate video for the equatorial one but with this one here you essentially have two directions or axes in which you can move your telescope and I'm going to explain what they are and how they relate to your observations. So astronomical coordinate systems are, they basically specify astronomical object positions relative to some physical reference points available to the observer. What does that kind of mean? Well as we look at stuff in the sky we use something relative to us to get a position to that particular object and depending on the coordinate system we use it will either change or it won't change. So with the altitude azimuth, the objects in the sky will obviously change as the Earth rotates. With the equatorial style one, then they obviously do change in the sky, but you'll have a right ascension and declination position which actually is fixed on the celestial sphere instead, and you move your telescope to suit. But anyway, this is the altitude azimuth one. So the reference point is obviously going to be very important because Earth is moving, as I mentioned. So as the Earth rotates, an object in the sky is going to move despite it not actually, it might not be moving with respect to the background stars, but because we're rotating in this celestial sphere, it appears to move you know, from our point of view. So we need a reference point to actually measure from to get the position in the actual sky. So the horizontal system basically assumes that we're kind of on the surface of the Earth here. We have the horizon and anything above the horizon is going to have uh, an altitude position of between 0 and 90 degrees and then the angular position so if we kind of rotate around then we have an azimuth position which is basically between 0 and 360 degrees and that will give us obviously the location in the sky we're not going to have an altitude below the horizon because we can't see it then so that's basically the horizontal system so if you then look at your actual telescope itself you can essentially pinpoint those two axes, I suppose. So the altitude one is just you know, how high up the telescope is pointing. So that's like the vertical movement of your telescope. So you point straight up, you're going to be looking at an altitude of 90 degrees. And then azimuth-wise, you can rotate it all the way around. So those are your two coordinates, I suppose, on your altitude azimuth mount. And you can basically find an object in the sky there. But it obviously, it's going to move as the Earth rotates. So as that Earth, or as our Earth I should say, is rotating, that object moves along the sky. So we actually have to constantly move the altitude and the azimuth coordinates or the axes on our telescope to keep it tracked. So if you've ever done any long-term tracking of an object, maybe you want to watch a planet or something over like an hour, you want to watch Jupiter's moons, then you can have to move it in both those axes as we go across the sky. Now unfortunately if you want to do astrophotography and you need to do a very long exposure an azimuth altitude mount or altitude azimuth mount is not going to be what you want because what happens is you get field rotation. So as you track your object, yes you can keep your central object in your field of view. So here we've actually got the Andromeda galaxy and you can see obviously some of the satellite galaxies but we've kept the actual main Andromeda galaxy in the center of our image so the telescope is tracked as the Earth is rotated. However, the actual field itself, so the view that we're looking at has actually rotated about the center point and that's not what we want. That's gonna give blurring around the outside. You can see that the stars have all rotated around. So if you want to do a long exposure photograph using one of these sorts of mounts is not very good. It's not what you want, basically. Now, what you do want instead, if you want to do long-term tracking, is an equatorial mount, or equatorial system, coordinate system, essentially. And here you align to the polar axis, and then, well, that angle for the polar axis is essentially the latitude. So, you know, where we are, where I am, I should say, in the UK, we're kind of like just over 50 degrees latitude. So that basically means that I will position the angle of that telescope like that so it's pointing at Polaris the North Star and that angle will correlate to the latitude as you get down to latitudes closer to the equator then the telescope is kind of looking um, completely different 
and if you're at the pole, it'd be looking completely up essentially because that's essentially the, the rotation axis of Earth, so it's the polar axis. And with that one, you then have two different axes to rotate or move your telescope. You have the right ascension, and then you have the declination as well. And they move the telescope slightly differently. And because you've aligned to the polar axis, then it, again, the way that it moves and tracks is going to be slightly different. Now, what happens here is as the Earth rotates, those right ascension and declination positions on the celestial sphere don't actually change. The Earth is actually rotating inside the sphere, so those positions are constant. But if we want to track an object in the sky with our telescope, then we only need to move the right ascension axes on the telescope, because that will mimic the rotation of the Earth, and we just need to do it at the same speed that the Earth rotates. So if we've got our polar axis set up right in our telescope, we only need to move it in one axis to match that rotation rate. What does that actually do? Well, it means that the object we track is now, firstly, it's centered in our image. So it's in the center of our image for how many, how long we want to do it, maybe it's for like an hour or so, a few minutes. But also, the field doesn't rotate. Because we're only moving in one axis at the time, it means that the field of view we're looking at does not rotate, it remains still. So if you want to do astrophotography, then you're going to want to get yourself an equatorial mount. Now, you don't have to, you can get things like uh, a field derotator. What that would actually do is that would actually rotate your camera as it tracks, and you can still use this altitude azimuth mount instead. Now, you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just get the, the correct mount? Well, a lot of professional telescopes don't use equatorial mounts. Because you have to align it to the latitude where you are, it means the telescope is kind of going to be leaning over. And when you get to really big telescopes, that's a lot of weight and it becomes unsafe and engineering wise, it's not feasible to do so. So actually, a lot of these big professional telescopes actually have field derotators instead. So they will use the azimuth altitude mounts and they will move in two axes, but then they will compensate for that field rotation by rotating the camera. And that's purely because they're too big to have leaning over when you align it to the, the polar axis, essentially. So thank you for watching. And if you do enjoy, then do consider becoming a member of the channel. There's extra videos in the member section, and it just generally helps support the channel as well. So thank you for watching.